Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This is the second video in the lecture series. Go ahead and check out the first one if you haven't done so. And thank you for liking and subscribing. Also make sure to hit the notification bell. Now, in the previous video, in the first one, we talked about basic operations such as addition and subtraction. We've also done some multiplication, right? I think so. Here we go. Addition, subtraction, and multiplication. And for multiplication, remember, we use the distributive property. And today we're supposed to talk about division. Now for division, I told you this is going to be interesting. So let's go ahead and clean this up. And I'm going to go ahead and talk about division and other things. So we start with a clean slate. So I just said that we talked about addition, subtraction, multiplication, and now we're going to talk about division. Of course, in addition to all these things, we also talked about what is the conjugate of a complex number, how do you define it, and where do they come from. Okay, anyways, you can go ahead and check it out. Now, we have these two complex numbers, z sub 1 and z sub 2, and I'd like to divide them. But before I do division with complex numbers, I want to show you an easier version of division. I want to divide a complex number by a real number. So, for example, if you take something like 3 plus 4i and divide it by 2, what happens? Here's what happens. You can go ahead and separate it into 3 over 2 plus 4i over 2. And this just becomes 3 over 2 plus 2i. It becomes a complex number again, but the real part is cut in half and the imaginary part is also cut in half. That's pretty much what happens when you divide by a real number. And in some cases, it completely, completely simplifies. Like, let's say we have 10 plus 5i and you're dividing by 5. Then just, this just becomes 2 plus i, which is fairly simple. Okay? Now let's go ahead and talk about a harder version of division. And here I'd like to show you two approaches okay, for division. So the first approach is the one that uses conjugates. So how do you divide two complex numbers? Well, you can't divide them like polynomials or integers. So we have to do it differently. And the method is multiplying by the conjugate. What is the conjugate of 5 minus i? It is 5 plus i. So I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by 5 plus i. Well, essentially this is 1, right? So it doesn't matter. But it does for the denominator. So let's go ahead and multiply these. You know multiplication, hopefully, either before or you, you've seen the first video. Now when you multiply two conjugates, remember that we get a squared plus b squared. So this is going to be 25 plus 1, which is 26. For the numerator, we do need to distribute. Let's go ahead and distribute 3 times 5, 3 times i, 4i times 5, and 4i times i. 4i times i is 4i squared, and that's just going to be negative 4. Can I just write it as negative 4 or minus 4? And then this is going to be 26. And now if you add the real parts and the imaginary parts, by the way, we didn't, uh, well, I think we talked about addition. Yes, we did. So this becomes 11 plus 23i divided by 26. And then if you just write this separately, 11 over 26, remember we just talked about it, and then you're going to get the answer as another complex number. So if you divide a complex number by another complex number, you still get a complex number. Make sense? So here's my second approach. I'm going to start off with 3 plus 4i and then divide it by 5 minus i. And I'm expecting this to be a complex number. How do you write a complex number? We write it as a plus pi or c plus di. Let's just use a plus bi, right? And then do the following. If you multiply this, like cross multiply, you're going to get the following. 3 plus 4i equals 5 minus i times a plus bi. You do know how to multiply complex numbers, so let's go ahead and simplify this. 5a and then 5bi minus ai and then minus bi squared, which is plus b. Okay? And then simplify further. 
you're going to get 5a plus b and 5b minus a as the imaginary part. Now, we didn't talk about this in a formulaic way, but uh, we can just briefly mention it. When two complex numbers are equal, so what do I mean by that? If x plus yi is equal to z plus wi, this implies, this implies x is equal to z and this is an and, watch out, y is equal to w. In other words, if two complex numbers are equal, then their real parts are equal and their imaginary parts are equal. That's the only way this can happen. Make sense? I hope it does. So now we talked about it. Hopefully this made sense. Now we can go ahead and write the equations from here. First equation. This is going to equal 3. So 5a plus b is 3. And this is going to equal 4. 5b minus a is 4. Obviously, you want to solve for a and b. Let's go ahead and eliminate one of these variables. Let's multiply the second equation by 5. That gives us 5 times 5, 25b minus 5a is equal to 20. And the first equation was 5a plus b is equal to 3. If you add these two up, you're going to get 26b is equal to 23, which means b is equal to 23 over 26. And if you plug in b into one of these equations, you should be getting 11 over 26 for a. I just used my cheat sheet, and this gives you the values of a and b. But we assume that the quotient is in this form. Therefore, the answer is going to be a plus b multiplied by i. Make sense? We get the same answer, but in a different way. Which method you like better, please let me know. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about another topic real quick, but we're going to go into more detail in the next episode. So make sure to watch that as well. Okay, the next topic we're going to talk about is absolute value, which is also called the modulus of a complex number. So the absolute value of z equals a plus bi is given by the square root of a squared plus b squared, also denoted by r, which could mean radius, but we could also use the absolute value symbol. And as you can see here, a complex number can be graphed or plotted, and then the absolute value represents the distance from zero on the plane. Okay? There's a name for this plane, which I can't remember, but I believe it starts with G, something like that. If somebody knows, please write it down in the comment section. Anyways, so in other words, this is significant, by the way. Z equal, equals A plus BI, which is a complex number, also represents an ordered pair or a vector, however you want to look at it. That's why even though they are not real, they are used in real life. So they're very much real. And that's what makes them so interesting. A joke, there are two kinds of people in this world. One, people who love complex numbers. And the second one is people who are about to love complex numbers. In other words, candidates. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell and stay tuned for upcoming videos. See you in the next episode. Bye.